Osaka is a city famous for many things. It is one of the three major cities in Japan, and it is known for its modern architecture, active nightlife, and delicious street food. And oh, is the food so good. Osaka is popularly known as the nation's kitchen for a good reason. And this is how we spent 48 hours in Osaka, Japan. After checking into our hotel, which we'll give a room tour later in this video, including the price we paid per night, we hit the ground running to see the city using the very timely and efficient public transportation system. And our first stop was to visit the most iconic landmark of the city, Osaka Castle. Yeah, this is our second castle on this trip and uh, the moat here with these walls, this is Osaka Castle compared to Hiroshima Castle. This is massive, man. These walls look epic. <laughs> and I've said this before, but I personally love a castle with a large moat. And this historic castle grounds has two of them, an inner and an outer moat to protect the grounds from the enemies. Second layer of defense is here. Not just one moat, but two. She's filming the same thing as usual. Our minds work the same. As we admire the beautiful gate, we enter into the inner castle grounds. The original Osaka castle construction began in the 16th century and played a major role in the unification of Japan. The castle itself has gone through relocation and reconstruction throughout history. And today, Osaka castle sits on a large area of land that is open to the public and a popular spot for locals and tourists to enjoy. As you can see, it is very busy at the start of Sakura season for this year. So we just came from Hiroshima and we went into the castle there, which looked very similar, but this one is just way bigger and a little more epic. And a little more gold. <laughs> Golden, yeah, nice. It's like very epic from the outside. On this beautiful sunny Monday, the line to go to the castle museum was so long, so we opted out and enjoyed the castle surroundings. The entire area is huge, full of towers, gates, statues and stores. There are often events, festivals, food vendors, and performances here on the castle grounds, and one could spend a solid few hours just walking around. So yeah, you can loop the whole entire castle on this pathway around the moat. It's very impressive. It looks epic everywhere. The gardens are awesome and a lot of shrines also in the surrounding area. And a, a lot of cherry blossom trees blooming. Cherry blossom trees, that's true. So I think, yeah, you might have a good day here, even though if you don't go into the actual castle. And after enjoying some of the old world of Osaka, we went over to the new world area of Shinsekai in search of something to eat. And we're approaching Shinsekai area, which is a popular like fair restaurant amusement area. Shinsekai is an area of Osaka that feels like a theme park of a city, with Stenkaku Tower as the centerpiece. So the whole Shinsekai area is basically built around this tower. The modern day area you see now was modeled after Coney Island and Paris, but of course with Japanese style. From statues to retro signs to colorful lights, this area is very vibrant and one of the few times I actually heard music openly playing on the streets of Japan. There are a lot of restaurants in this area here in Shinsekai, uh, also some clothing shops. It feels like a almost like an amusement park, but just consisting out of restaurants and stands. So not sure what I expected here. It feels really touristy. I looked up some ratings. They're really bad, like 2.8, 2.6. So it seems like there might be some tourist traps here. We'll try to find something decent to snack on, I guess. While there were a plethora of restaurants with mixed ratings in this area, we decided to go to a small izakaya that we saw had decent reviews to sit for a bit and enjoy some yakitori. Izakayas are casual Japanese bars that are popular after working hours and a lot of the ones we saw during our trip are pretty small with not a lot of seating. So by the evening, these places are packed. We decided to pop into this one and enjoy a drink or two and yakitori. The staff did not speak English, but fortunately the menu was in English and we were able to at least point an order. We were just happy to sit and enjoy our drinks along with the delicious aroma of the grill. In addition to chicken skewers, we ordered some grilled mushrooms and tofu, along with octopus as well. As we consumed our drinks and yakitori, we thoroughly enjoyed the atmosphere of this place that was mostly created by this Japanese guy singing his heart out to some karaoke. In between songs, we were just talking and using Google Translate, 
and I think they were amused by our attempt to pronounce Japanese words. So after letting that peach drink work its magic on me, we decided to join the karaoke fun, and Phil chose a song for us to sing. Obviously, I can't play the clip for copyright reasons. Oh, and our voices are just way too good to be heard. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this is not at all embarrassing to watch and listen to now. Everyone in the pub had a good laugh, and overall it was an enjoyable meal. We ended up spending 3,000 yen, which is about 20 US dollars, on this lunch, which I think is a pretty good price for food, drink, and experience. And this does include the 300 yen seating charge per person, plus 100 yen for each karaoke song. This seating cover charge is normal at izakayas and can really range in price, so it's always good to ask the amount before you sit and order. We just went to this yakitori place, which was pretty wholesome, a very small bar. There was nobody in there and went in. One guy came in and started singing karaoke. We sang some of 69 by Brian Adams. Uh, it was the first time ever I sang something. It was horrible, but fun at the same time. So overall, this area feels a bit like it's built a bit as a, let's say, a tourist destination. It might be a little trappy. However, that's one thing here I really wanted to check out. And it's right there. It's uh, a knife shop. Japan obviously known to be one of the best knife makers uh, in the world oh, amongst Germany. Germany. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Japanese knives are cooler so I wanted to check the shop out. And on our way to one of the most iconic areas of the city, we passed through Denden Town, which is like the Akihabara of Osaka. There are a lot of shops with anime, cameras, electronics, and games, and apparently this area has a very specific item that Phil really wants to test out. I don't know if it's because I accidentally ordered a peach drink with alcohol, but this guy's yapping my ear off about a freaking mouse pad. He's so excited about a mouse pad. It's an artisan mouse pad. We're here for a mouse pad. I must not be a real gamer with my IKEA mouse pad, but Phil was really into these, and apparently other people as well, because there were so many samples to test out and charts of different softness and hardness levels. I didn't come to Japan to be a mouse pad holder, so we could test out the mouse pads. <laughs> 12 hours later. It was all just a little much for my peach drinking booty to handle. But after what felt like ages, we make it through the shops, passing through more streets full of shops, and I get some much needed hydration. Dude, these alleys is like the best thing about Japan. You step off the main street and then you're in these tighter alleys and they just look epic. Yeah, I really love this dark wood architecture and features. There are so many wooden signs and carvings in this area and I absolutely love it. It always surprises me how calm and empty a lot of these side streets are in such a populated Japanese city. Just a few streets over, you can hear the birds chirping. And after some serenity, we walk over to the biggest tourist hotspot of the city. Right, I think we're approaching what is the main tourist area of Osaka. All right, so this is Dotonbury and all of a sudden we just walked into this main walking street. It's just packed. This is like super full, but it feels super colorful, super lively. There's so many big stores with big figurines and stuff. And there should be this famous river right around the corner. Oh, there's a crab. There's a giant crab. I want to touch it. Dotonbury is a district known for its epic neon lights along with nightlife and tons of restaurants. There are a lot of shops in this area as well, and even a large Don Quixote Ferris wheel along the water. Wow, dude, this is what I picture the mega cities of Japan to be like. There's the big running man figurine that is uh, what Osaka is known for, which means this is the main spot here and i'm losing diana constantly she blends in so well wearing all black dark hair but man look at the dimensions of this city it's crazy i absolutely love the aesthetic of this canal street from large statues advertising takoyaki to colorful buildings and advertisements it just feels so vibrant and probably looks even better at night if you go down the channel a little bit, which I think we'll do in a second, it looks a little better. But dude, aren't these crazy dimensions? Yeah, I like the depth and the layers of the street. It's pretty cool. For some reason, it feels a little unreal still. I can't believe I'm here. So while we wait for the sun to set, we decide to walk over a few blocks north to America Mora. 
This area feels very hipster with designer and secondhand fashion shops. We noticed a lot of fancy and stylish cars driving around as well, but we had our focus set to this takoyaki place that looked absolutely amazing. Takoyaki was first popularized in Osaka, and it's these ball-shaped batter filled with octopus, usually topped with tempura, ginger, and green onions, and you can't forget the takoyaki sauce and mayonnaise as well. We made another video trying street food in Osaka, and everything was so delicious. And after filling our bellies, we head back over to Doltenbury to see the neon lights and the famous Running Man. We're going back to Doltenbury right now, and the sun is setting, the lights are coming on, and I feel like Japan, and especially Osaka, is one giant aesthetics game. Everything looks awesome. <laughs> the signage is very pretty, there's always these cute statues. Also, the taxis being like this old school vibe with lights and stuff. Is it necessary? No. Do I appreciate it? Absolutely. This area is nothing like I've ever seen before, mostly only in movies or videos, so it was really, really cool to see in person. So we're currently just waiting here at the riverside because the theory is that that running man guy, that uh, symbol of Osaka, is turning on 30 minutes after sunset. We're not sure if that's correct. And there's a lot of people that are just waiting here on the side as well. There it happens. Everybody is screaming, euphoria. Wow. Now all the lights are on, hopefully. Very nice. Iconic. All the picture takers. Getting her not to leave. And we're back on the bridge. Still not empty. I don't want to cross that. And that way. Oh no, that's not any better. And after enjoying this area, we head back up to Umeda where we were staying. So it's raining today in Osaka. This is the little desk setup nice and cozy and I was gonna do laundry however everyone else had the same idea so I'm gonna go to a laundromat. Since 8 a.m. this morning the two laundry machines in our hotel have been full. There's a little sign in our rooms that'll show us if they're available or not and every time they're available but it's only for a second I went down there and there's already a long line so I'm just gonna go to this laundromat and hopefully it works out. And not to bore you too long with laundry details, I got some reading and laundry done while Phil was on the laptop for a bit in the room. So perfect time for a room tour. We stayed at this hotel in the Umeda district. This is the standard room with two twin beds so we could get two blankets, a separate toilet room with an oh so wonderful bidet, and a complete wet room with a shower and a tub. To have two separate rooms for the bathrooms is typical in Japan and I much prefer this. We had a sink along with a kettle and a tiny desk in the room and so far each of our hotels in Japan have offered amenities like robes, slippers, toiletries, and even face masks. This room specifically costed 17,500 yen per night, which is around 120 US dollars. And we actually ended up staying here multiple nights, two days to see Osaka, and two other nights for full day trips to both Kobe and Kyoto. I really enjoyed the Umeda area, which we were going to have to fully utilize today since it was raining. Fortunately, Japan is completely prepared for rain with covered shotengai to walk along. These shopping streets are perfect for rainy or snowy days to go along without getting soaked. We can also go underground and there are so many shopping paths connecting to the subway system. We popped into a local sushi place for lunch and enjoyed this full sushi plate for under a thousand yen. The chef made it right in front of us and it was one of my favorite meals on this trip. Awesome dude. And every every piece tastes really good, even the ones I usually don't like as much. So happy we found this. They're not always open, but uh really glad we did this now and I feel like I wanna come back. We weren't about to let the gray and rain ruin our trip. So we went over to the Umeda Sky Building to get an elevated view of the city. The building itself is pretty cool with two towers. The open elevator to go up was a bit scary for me. But after going through this glass tube of an escalator, we made it to the ticket machine where we bought two tickets for the observatory for 1,500 yen each. I was afraid this is going to be not nothing. It's not worth it. But first view. Oh my god. Damn. Already worth it. Holy smokes! Don't look over. Don't don't look over. It's terrifying. It's not as bad as the Düsseldorf Tower where you look 
That's a slanted thing. Yeah, but the difference is you have water around you. Even though it doesn't make sense, I feel like I'll just jump out into the water. Just jump from 200 meters into the I'll water. I'll survive. <laughs> and as someone who is scared of heights, I still love going up tall buildings and seeing the skyline from above. There was even a cafe up here to sit and enjoy the views with a 360 degree view of the city. We saw planes flying by, trains crossing bridges, and even a highway going straight through a building. We could see the surrounding mountains and all the way out to Kobe where we would be making a day trip the next day. Well, you can see the scale of the city so nicely from up here. And it's massive, dude. If you're into elevated views of a city, this was definitely worth it. So this is the top of the Umeda Sky Building and this nice little 360 walk around here. However, you almost get a better view, at least in some directions, from the floor one down because it's straight and you're looking out of the window. It's a little obstructed, but yeah. it's still nice to be here. And you really can feel the scale of the city from up here. I love how a lot of the cities we've been in in Japan have just mountains surrounding it. Like the city was built in this little valley and then you can just see in the distance all of these mountains and viewpoints. But there's awesome hiking trails just like a few hours that way. Yeah, I think the whole country is very mountainous. It's probably because the tectonic plates yeah. meet here, right? And that's also why there's so many earthquakes. earthquakes. Tsunamis. Yeah. yeah. We could spend a few more hours up here, but we wanted to utilize the slight break in rain to enjoy the outside for a bit and walk through the adjacent park. I noticed this city does a good job of trying to add some green and small parks throughout the city. Even if it's just a few trees in a pond, small parks were often a good place to see nature in this concrete jungle. Baby bamboo forest, the baby boo in the back. Oh. Plus, it was cherry blossom season, so the flowers were blooming beautifully. Living in Germany, we are very much familiar with the rainy days, and there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. And to keep that German theme, look here, there's a Deutsche Baumkuchen. We saw a lot of Baumkuchen here in Japan, which I'm not complaining because it's one of my favorite German cakes, but I'm used to seeing this more around Christmas time. And we just really enjoyed looking at a lot of the different items at convenience stores. And another perfect thing to do in Japan when it's raining is go to an arcade. Also, fun fact, if you ever, ever want to get coins for like the buses and stuff, you can just come in here, put your thousands, put your 500s and get 100 coins. And they're everywhere, the arcades, so <laughs> no. you do that every 100 meters. Yeah, it's really easy. I'm not sure if these are for small children, but I saw this cute platypus that I really wanted. This one's on the ground. I don't know if it's for children, but I want to try it. <laughs> and while Phil was in the restroom, I was left alone to spend my entire life savings on this crane game. No, this is how it starts. I've spent a thousand yen and it's just moving him around. I think the crane's not strong enough. So I pretty much just put 1500 in and he's just stuck there. There's no way, dude. I just filmed. You just did 10 attempts. Why did you start with it before I started filming? <laughs> it's a vibrator. So this is the most Japanese thing. All these gacha machines, the crane machines. And I... I just went over to the toilet and then she calls me, where are you? And she shows me a picture and I already put 10 coins in there. I actually put 15. Really? So he was like 16 attempts, 1600 yen. That's how it starts, gambling addiction. Totally worth it. And if you've seen our Osaka street food video, you will know what we decided to eat for dinner. We went to this nearby restaurant to try Osaka style okonomiyaki, which is a Japanese style pancake. Wow, it's so hot. Double whammy try. This is what it looks like. Beautiful. To my surprise, it tastes quite a lot different than the one in Hiroshima. You think okonomiyaki should be fairly similar, but it is very different taste. And while we were at the grill, we ordered a tonpei as well. This might be the protein richest dish we've had in Japan so we're, far. We're getting the gains. <laughs> oh, it must be so hot, right? Mm. Mm. It's a blanket, so I get steak in a blanket. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Both of these dishes were so good. And I ordered another sake, which only enhanced the experience. And that's how we spent 48 hours or two days in Osaka. 
It's never enough time, but we were happy to see and enjoy as much as we did in a short period. And let us know what would you do if you only had two days in this city?